Friday everyone and welcome back for day five of your Anchored Devotionals. Today we're focusing on the church and more specifically we're thinking about the early church, the way in which it was anchored in the hope of Jesus and anchored then in love for one another. Before we start, I wanted um, to tell you a short story. It is Disney themed again, I apologise for that, um, but I promise it's relevant. Last week, I was working on this beautiful puzzle. Okay, I hope you can see it. And I don't ordinarily do puzzles. It was a challenge I set myself, but when I opened the box and I saw 1,000 tiny pieces staring back at me, I experienced something close to panic and a great degree of regret. But I kept going and I suddenly realized something that most puzzlers see every time they open a box, that as you put the individual pieces into place, you start to see the big picture coming through. And it struck me that that was exactly what um, I feel the Bible is teaching us about the church. We come together as individuals and we tell um, God's big story. We talk about his rescue plan. We show it in action and we find our purpose and we work best when we are part of that united, loving church. So I want you to bear that in mind as we begin thinking through this today. We'll pray to begin with, if that's okay. Dear God, I pray that you would be with everyone who's listening today. I pray that they would now have settled minds so that they can listen and know what it is that you want to teach us. I pray that you would be working in their hearts and giving us information that we can then take on in our lives about your love and how we can put that love into action. Amen. So today's reading is from Acts 2 verses 42 to 47 and we're going to be thinking about uh, the characteristics of the early church, what it was like. But before you read that yourselves, I want you to take a little look with me at what was happening just before the passage begins. What was happening? Well, basically everything. Jesus had died on the cross, came back to life, ascended to heaven, and before that promised the disciples that God would send them the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would give them the power to preach and continue his mission on earth. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and with God's power, the disciples were able to preach um, a message that people in Jerusalem heard, even if they didn't speak the language, reminding us that God and his power was in that. We're told that about 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus um, that day, and so the church was born. In that moment when Peter was preaching, I found it really interesting that he called them brothers and sisters. I thought it was important that we think about the church as a family. And we remember that it's not a bloodline that we learn about in biology. It's the blood of Jesus that unites us and brings us into fellowship together. So pause the video now and take some time to read Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47 for yourself. And then we'll come back and we'll think about what that early church looked like. Okay, welcome back. Um, we're going to dig straight into that passage now. We're going to be looking first of all at the characteristic of the early church um, as a church that was anchored in the hope of Jesus. We're looking at verse 42 to begin with. And what do we learn about the church in verse 42? Well, we find out that the Christians, the believers, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, which is the gospel, the good news about Jesus, they set their hope in him. The believers were devoted to, they devoted themselves to the fellowship. That means that they were united in Christ. They recognized that they were like-minded because of him, because that's what fellowship means. You're joined together, you're brought together by one common idea. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread, um, thinking about communion. They were honouring and sharing in Jesus' sacrifice together. And then finally, they devoted themselves to prayer. So in all of those ways, we see that the early church was relying on God. It was an upward looking church. What does it mean to devote yourself to something? Because that comes through really strongly there. If you devote to something, 
devote yourself to something, then you are fully committing. You're giving yourself over to that. And I think there's a challenge for us there to be fully devoted to God as a church. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 summarizes this really well and it says, From him, from Jesus, the whole body of the church grows and builds itself up in love. And I did a little bit of origami for dummies. I'm not artistic, but as you can see, um, this is my best attempt. I want you to think about the church coming from him. Jesus um, provides us with the hope, the hope of heaven through his death on the cross. And because of his sacrifice, we are joined. We are anchored in one another in our love for him. Okay, the cross in our hearts brings us together too. The second point that I'd like us to look at, the second feature or characteristic of the early church was that it was grounded in love for one another. There was this radical generosity with one another. And I suppose the message for us is that that's what comes when we understand that every good and perfect gift comes from God. When we see that the material things are immaterial, they're insignificant, they're unimportant, and that we should be showing love to one another in the same free manner that um, Jesus showed his love to us. Romans 12 verse 10 summarizes this really well. Um, be devoted to one another in love. Give yourself fully to one another in love. And your challenge today, your spiritual challenge, if you take it up, is to try to show that love in action. Think about a way that you can not just be sharing possessions like they were in the early church, but think about how you could be sharing your time with others. Think about how you can be praying for others, giving yourself fully to um, your friends in Christ. Maybe text someone today and say, listen, I'm going to be praying for you or a group of friends and ask if they have any prayer requests that you could be um, keeping in mind. Your third and final idea from the passage is found in verse 47. Finally, let's think about how the church is anchored in God's power. We're told, and God added to their number daily. The church is not an exclusive club. It's not for a minority or a set few, and it's controlled. The whole church operates because of the Holy Spirit, through God's power alone. We work as servants for him and for his glory. So I hope that's been useful as we thought about the passage. I do want you to spend a little bit of time now um, quietly reflecting in prayer, and I thought I might be able to help you with a structure for that if you wanna take it on board. I've got four ideas for your prayer. Um, first of all, you might want to think about how God is devoted to us. Spend some time thanking him for being fully devoted to us in his love. Thank him for his steadfast love, that he is our anchor, our hope. Then move on to thinking about your devotion to God. Maybe say sorry if you feel that that's something you need to address. Maybe recommit to being fully devoted to him. Then Pray for the church. Pray for unity for us as a church. Pray for the church around the world. Pray for those um, little niggles that come in. Pray for those difficult questions and topics that we address. Pray that there would be um, wisdom from God, that we would pray to him in those situations and there would be love for one another in them too. And then finally, pray for that person um, that you're committing to um, showing love in action for today. Okay, um, welcome back from your short time of prayer. I, I'm just gonna say a couple of things now to finish the video. Um, first of all, you've probably picked up on it. Your code word for tonight is devoted. I thought there was no other choice given the passage that we have. And I hope you remember that message of being devoted to God, devoted to one another. Um, and as we go forward as a, a group of um, young people um, and leaders into the year ahead, I, I just pray that we would all be anchored um, in that attitude towards God and towards each other. I hope you have a great night tonight. It's gonna to be a great celebration and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.